and we can get rolling with the main show. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to Home Office Ergonomics. This is a presentation of the Twin Cities Telework webinar series. My name is Michelle Leonard, and I'm the Outreach and Programs Manager for Commuter Services and Twin Cities Telework by Commuter Services. And I'm joined today by our presenters, Dr. Sarah Cooperis and Dr. Chad Henriksen, and my colleague, Kate Meredith, who is Vice President of Commuter Services. Um, oh, <laughs> hold on just a quick second here. Um, there we go. Okay, as mentioned, uh, today's presentation is part of the Twin Cities Telework webinar series. Home Office Ergonomics is the fifth in this series, and we've developed it since the beginning of the pandemic two years ago. Uh, Twin Cities Telework by Commuter Services provides free telework resources for employers, managers, and teleworkers around the state of Minnesota, thanks to an appropriation of the 20, 2021 Minnesota State Legislature. And we thank our legislators for the support that makes this valuable resource accessible to every Minnesotan who needs it. And we'll share a little bit more about Twin Cities Telework at the end of the program. So we'll get started with a couple quick details. Uh, we are recording this presentation and we'll provide all of you with a link to the presentation and the full slide deck within a week of this event. And we will keep both of those resources available on our commuter services website, as well as our Twin Cities Telework website. The information in today's presentation will be broken out into a couple of sections and we'll take questions after each section and again before we wrap up the webinar. And so you can submit your questions through the question and answer tool or chat option and we'll have Dr. Sarah or Dr. Chad answer those questions directly. Um, should you have a question after the fact, you can do one of two things. You could go to our Twin Cities Telework website, which is located at TCT tctelework.com and we have a tool on there called ask an expert where you can submit questions or uh, my name is Michelle Leonard and my email address is mleonard at 494 quarter.org and I can forward those questions after the fact and finally one little thing we're going to ask participants to do a real short two question survey after today's presentation just give us a minute to give us a little feedback and we'd appreciate that. The Twin Cities Telework is really excited to welcome today's presentation or presenters. Um, Dr. Sarah Cooperis of the Chiropractic Performance Center and Dr. Chad Henriksen from Northwestern Health Sciences University's Worksite Right program. The webinar is also being provided with the support of the Minnesota Chiropractic Association. Dr. Sarah Cooperis is a chiropractic physician specializing in sports, prenatal, and pediatric chiropractic care, one of the very few in the St. Cloud area. With a background in athletic training and more than 20 years in sports injury experience, she is one of the St. Cloud region's leading providers for athletic performance and injuries. Dr. Sarah has completed multiple internships, including at the United States Olympic Training Center, treating athletes training in a variety of sports. She has also traveled nationally and internationally working with various sporting events like the CSIT World Sports Games in Spain. Dr. Sarah is the immediate past president of the Minnesota Chiropractic Association and currently serves as the MCA's education chair. She and her husband live in Sartell and are, have been blessed with two amazing daughters. 
For over 25 years, Dr. Chad Henriksen has provided health and wellness services to numerous employers and industry associations. He has been featured in national publications and local, I'm sorry, national publications and offered expertise through local media in addition to his doctor of chiropractic degree, he has his diplomat in occupational health and ergonomics. In his position at, as director of worksite right at Northwestern Health Sciences University in Bloomington, Dr. Hendrickson leads a team of, a team delivering on-site health, wellness, and safety services to employers around the country. And we thank both of our speakers for joining us today. So to set this up a little bit, I just want to take us back a couple of years. As everyone probably realizes, this week in particular marks about two years since the COVID-19 pandemic really hit Minnesota. Um, Governor Tim Walz declared the peacetime state of emergency on March 13th and the stay-at-home order went into effect less than two weeks later. And in fact, according to the Minnesota Department of Education and Economic Development, um, DEED estimates that approximately 1 million Minnesotans were working from home by May of 2020. And it was, <laughs> it was during that time when many of us were scrambling to get our workspaces set up. Some of us were lucky enough to have a spare room or a small desk where we could set up a temporary workspace, but many of us did not have a suitable work spot option and landed at a coffee table or kitchen table. And so those are really stressful times, both on our bodies and our minds. And so with that in mind, I guess I'll just turn this over to Dr. Sarah to really get us started. Well, thank you so much, Michelle. Um, as you said, I have been in private practice almost 20 years. Um, I practice up by St. Cloud. I have a very, um, I have an amazing practice, really. I love, I love our patients. I do a lot of pediatric work, um, babies, pregnant mamas and kids. And I also do a lot of sports care. Um, but that also means like we treat everybody in between too. So, um, so how did we get here? And that's kind of the lens that I looked at this with is how did we get here and what did we see and what have we learned over the last two years of this crazy pandemic world? Who would have thought two years later, we are having this conversation, right? We all thought we, this was going to be over in a, you know, two weeks <laughs> and here we are two years later. So working from home sounds like such a great idea, right? Like, yes, I'm going home. This sounds amazing. Um, but the problem with that was that Many people ended up, like Michelle said, with very little space or the bed, your couch, your kitchen counter, a card table and chairs, your kitchen table. Um, and, and so we didn't have great spaces um, when we came home. And it was a very sudden, it was very fast. It all occurred very quickly. And so it wasn't, there wasn't a lot of time to prepare. So if we aren't practicing good ergonomics at home, what we end up with is we expose ourselves to injury, um, which then contributes to higher direct costs and indirect costs, which then changes a business's operationality, right? So if you don't feel good and it hurts to do my job, I am not as productive. And I think what we've seen, um, and maybe Chad can talk about this or, and this is not my realm, but like, I think we've seen people be more productive um, at home to, to some extent, my introverted patients love, 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 love being at home. Um, my extroverts are dying, right. And they can't wait to get back into the office. So, um, but when you don't feel good and you've got an injury, now we've got higher cost to your employer. We've got work comp issues, um, and we've got productivity issues. So the U S Bureau of labor statistics. So a little bit more nationally reported that just below 33% of workers worked remote due to the pandemic. Um, but it changed, didn't change where they work, but also how they work. And it was in most cases, people were working with unsatisfactory equipment, right? So what happens is you, you sit at your, your coffee table, like this gal in this picture, and she's on the phone, she's got a laptop, she has zero support on her low back. She is slouching. Um, if that desk is too high or too low, you've got neck and shoulder pain, right? Um, that unsupported seat, like she's got, she's going to end up with low back pain, hip pain, knee pain. Like I look at her being 45 years old and think, oh my gosh, how is she going to get up? 
because there would be some sounds coming out of me that wouldn't be very great. Um, and so employees keep working like this. Um, and then pretty soon you're going to start to develop a condition over, over a period of time. Chiropractors were, are positioned really well um, to treat musculoskeletal conditions. In fact, this is what we, we really specialize in, which means that we are not just neck pain, back pain, which is, is a lot of misconception, but really any issue that, can, that concerns a joint or a muscle, um, particularly biomechanical issues, posture issues, and structural issues. So that's where chiropractors were positioned really nicely um, in this pandemic to, to manage those conditions. And that's why we saw an influx of them in our, in our practices. But also, like I felt really strongly being in private practice that we were going to serve a, serve a role in providing care to people with neck pain, back pain, um, people who are working from home um, and keeping them out of the ERs and the urgent cares, right? So at, at, when this all started, we were worried about sick people, right? And we didn't want to go get sick, right? So we were trying to relieve the burden. And so we always stayed open um, from the beginning of the pandemic to serve who will who, who needs to be served. And what we saw in my practice in particular was that we had limited hours for a few short weeks. And then pretty soon we had more patients coming out of the work than we knew what to do with. So, which was, which was terribly surprising because it was not what we expected. So if we can go to the next slide, that'd be great. Wonderful. So what do the statistics say? So on a survey, 40% of people working from home aren't even working at a dedicated workspace. So this became a question in all of my new patient interactions was, are you working from home and where are you, what does that look like? Where are you working? And you would not believe the answers we got, right? They were, it was all over the board. So 20% of people were working from the living room. 20% are working in their bedrooms, right? Your bedroom should be for sleeping. 60% um, of people were unable to bring stuff home from their employer. So that meant no computer, no desk, maybe your computer, um, no chair, no um, document holders and things like that. So you were on your own to like people kind of went hair on fire and just get out of here, go home. And they just sent you home with nothing. So we were very ill-equipped. A third of people admitted to pur personally purchasing equipment from their own pockets to help them work more efficiently from home. 92% of chiropractors commented that patients reported more back pain, more neck pain, and other musculoskeletal um, issues since the stay-at-home guidance had started. And 41% of Americans have had new or increased back, neck, and shoulder pain since starting remotely. So there has never been more people working with inappropriate equipment, which is why we're having this conversation. So, and then interestingly, you think about what does this mean from, from an industry in a long-term perspective for industries and for companies? And, and it's nearly 70% of all large company CEOs are planning to downsize their offices because they've realized that we don't need the expense of having the office. We can have people work remote and be efficient and we don't, we don't need to do this. So this is going to, this has changed our culture um, and it's going to change us in a way that this might be a, a permanent solution for, for some folks. So the American Chiropractic Association conducted a, a fairly informal um, survey of their, of their member doctors, and it was a collaboration with the Wall Street Journal, and it was published in the New York, New York Times or New York Post as well. Um, and it was done in 2020, and they collaborated their results in April of 21. So if we can go to the next slide, we can talk about that. So um, this was kind of a collaboration of the, of the results on what did we see as chiropractors, um, as those musculoskeletal specialists in the field, what did we see um, as common injuries from working from, and particularly from working from home, but also like consider the state of the world, right? Everything is hair on fire. We know we have more unknowns than knowns. Nobody knows what to do. Nobody, people are dying. It's, it was bad. It was, it was bad. And, um, so, so you think about all of that and then the stress of all of that every single day, um, people get weary. And so now here we are two years later, fairly weary and a little worse for the wear. But the injuries that we've seen um, were neck pain, 
low back pain, that's your lumbosacral pain, cervical pain, cervical is another fancy word for neck, um, and headaches and different kinds of headaches, cervicogenic, meaning the pain comes out of your neck, tension headaches, um, are muscle related, and then some non-spinal joint pain. And the interesting thing was the majority was all of the above. So you don't just get to sit in a chair, sit at your coffee table and not have all of the above, right? So working from home really created um, this whole host of symptoms and symptoms in people who had never had these things before. So this was new, this was really new. And, and they're showing up in our office like, I don't know what to do. I've never had low back pain before. And it's kind of scary if, if, if that's something that you've, you've never experienced before. So the next slide talks about the why. So why are we seeing all this? Uh, other than sitting at crummy spaces in our homes. Um, and so they, they had uh, parceled out that the lack of movement was the number one cause of musculoskeletal concerns um, and followed shortly behind with psychological stress. So we're at home, we're doing less. We had more time than money, right? And so that didn't mean we used our time wisely. And it meant that we sat on our butts even more. And work is easy, it's there. And so it's easy to just default and just go sit at your computer and do your work. And so the lack of movement and that lack of, of just getting up and um, think about how your day is different when you have a commute involved and you have a lunch involved. You know, at home, you just work through your lunch, right? You run downstairs, grab some, some lunch and you, you pop back to your computer and you're sitting there eating while you're working, which we know is not super great for you. So, and then the psychological factor too, the psychological stress, if we consider stress as a factor here and, and un, really an underlying factor to some of these big, uh, postural and biomechanical concerns, um, we were living in this constant state of unknown and this constant state of fear about what was happening and what was next and how do we fix this? And we didn't have any great answers, right? And so what that does is it puts you in this constant state of sympathetic dominance or fight or flight. And so we're not meant to live in fight or flight way up here all the time, every single day. And eventually that leads to adrenal fatigue. Now we're exhausted, we're mentally trashed. And so what happens over time is, is what, what, the, what that fight or flight does is it stimulates your primitive brain, right? So we call this the lizard brain in my office, which is the fight or flight response. So what happens when you're fired up in fight or flight is that your logic and reasoning, your frontal cortex, gone. So we can't logic and reason when we are thinking about where, when we're stuck in fight or flight. And so logic and reason is, is, is out the door. And so then we end up living in a really highly emotionally charged space. So if parents are highly emotionally charged and in fight or flight, what do you think your kids are doing? They're going to operate in this, the exact same space. Next slide, please. All right, so other injuries that we've seen, so um, other than your neck pain, back pain, headaches, which we're really good at, um, we saw a bunch of other things too. Um, we saw a lot of text neck. This is kind of a, a trendy thing that we've been, it's got a diagnosis, no, it's got a title, um, but this is the, those devices that we are holding in front of us, whether that's a phone or an iPad. And what happens is we start getting really far forward and like this graphic here that you can see when we're perfectly aligned, it's about five kilograms of weight on your spine when you are perfectly aligned, which means your ear is in line with your shoulder. If you come forward 30%, that five kilograms turns into 18. So three times as much. And then even farther is 24. And even farther is 28 kilograms compared to five. And I don't know about you, but how many kids do you know that look just like these kids or this, this little guy here? Um, my kids are just as guilty. And so, especially when everything was on screens through, throughout COVID. So what we're seeing is all this weight on your neck and your upper back. No wonder why, no wonder why your neck hurts and your upper back hurts. In fact, and we teach in our office that for every inch forward, your ear in, it should be aligned with your shoulder, ideally, right? So for every inch forward that you come, you, that you are forward of your, of your shoulders, it's like an extra 10 pound backpack. So if you are two inches forward, you got a 20 pound backpack because those muscles in your neck and your upper back are so busy trying to pull you, your head back centered over your body. 
which is way too much. And that's not what those muscles were designed to do. And eventually they fatigue and they get sore and they hurt. And so then you're in, then you're feeling yucky and then you end up in our offices. <clears throat> so tech snack, super big deal. Technology became kind of front and center when, when COVID happened. Um, Carpal tunnel is another thing that we saw a lot of because people spent way too much time on their computers because they didn't take breaks. They were working more than their eight to nine hours a day. Um, and so we were, and then you put a crappy angle of your, of your laptop or your keyboard. And eventually that leads to carpal tunnel type syndromes. And we're still seeing some of that residual, um, people who've tried to, um, treat it and it doesn't, because it doesn't get treated. So we've had a couple of patients in the last few months just have carpal tunnel releases um, and just due to working from home and COVID. Cracked teeth, which I thought was an, a horribly interesting uh, injury, injury related to working from home. There was, there's never, there was a gal in um, New York who um, stated that she has seen more patients with tooth fractures in the past six months than she has in six years. But if you're stressed out, what happens? You're clenching, you're clenching at night, you're clenching during the day, and then that's going to lead. And if you don't have a great tooth structure, you're going to start to crack those teeth. And so, um, again, that goes back to that whole psychological stress, right? We were, you know, COVID induced nightmares, doom surfing, coronaphobia, all these things that they talk about, right? That, that anxiety affected our collective mental health. And so the dentists were busier. Um, and in Minnesota, the dentists were shut down for a period of quite a few months actually around here. So, um, some people didn't get care either. So we've also seen a lot of overuse injuries, right? So we're sitting more, we're, we're doing more and we're doing it repetitively and we're doing it biomechanically inefficiently, which leads to injury as well. Then of course the neck back pain, headaches and selfie elbow, which was another thing that I was like, huh, I didn't, didn't even know that was a thing, but apparently selfie elbow, which is likened to tennis elbow, um, was definitely a thing. So, so if we look at the next slide and we talk about your posture and the way you should be sitting at your desk. And I know Dr. Chad will kind of parcel out some of this even, even further, but, um, looking down at your computer screen, ideally we want that computer screen up in front of you, right? Um, so you don't want to be doing this looking down because that's going to reverse your cervical curve. Your cervical curve is supposed to be a reverse shape, a, a C shape. And if you're, if you're, if you're looking down all the time, you're going to start to go from this, from a C shape to straight to sometimes reverse, which is, is a really bad deal. So the yeah, head becomes in forward and comes in forward flexion and then gets translated forward. And again, that 10 pound backpack or that backpack we talked about in the last slide is start is what starts to happen because those muscles start to bring that, that over your trying to bring your head back over your body. So, and I get it when we get into projects, we're doing this, right. Um, we get into a project and we get close. Or you think about too, like the size of a laptop screen versus the size of your, your desktop screen. It's so much smaller, right? And I don't know about you, but I'm not a spring chicken anymore. So my eyesight's not as good. So then I neither need cheaters or I'm squinting or I'm increasing the font on my, my screen. So all of that leads to, can lead to, to posture, posture concerns. And then when we're sitting, what do we do when we start to sit, we start to slouch. And then we've got, we start to rotate our, our shoulders forward, right? We're slouchy. We're, we're kind of, we're working, right? And then we're typing. So all of this, all of your upper back and your shoulders start to round forward, which means you get tightness here in your chest because they get short and tight as they're rotated inward. And then your lungs, when this is all forward, your lungs and your chest can't actually expand to breathe with your entire lung capacity. So we start to become really shallow breathers. And then you put stress on top of that, which also creates shallow breathing. So now we're going to breathe with the top one third of our lungs and that's it. So we're not doing anything to fill our lungs up and exchange air and feel better. So those shoulders get rotated forward. I almost think about like monkeys, right? We're pretty soon, I joke in my office, like pretty soon we're just going to be monkeys dragging our knuckles on the ground again, because we are getting so rotated forward. So doing things to open up that chest, open up that, that upper back um, to kind of combat that, all that forward work is always really helpful. 
mouse thing too far away from your body, you know, you got that mouse here, you should have your elbow nice and close to you. And pretty soon that, that mouse starts getting away from you and, and farther and farther away from you. So then you end up with, with elbow and shoulder flexion or sorry, extension. And, and that gets too far away from you. So that can lead to shoulder problems. Like we call it mouse arm, right? Like that's the side you mouse on. So that's the side you carry all this tension in. So bringing back that mouse and getting it, it closer back, closer to you um, is, is really helpful as well. If we go on to the next slide, we'll talk about low back, um, that slouchy low back posture, right? We should be sitting upright um, at that slouched, real, real crummy posture, slouchy posture um, increases that pressure on the low back discs. The discs are, um, if you want to think about them like little sponges inside between your, or shock absorber between the bones of your lumbar spine. So your bones of your lumbar spine are big and they're meant to, to carry the weight of your body. And you've got these shock absorbers or these discs between those, every one of those vertebrae, and they're meant to, um, absorb all of that pressure, but by, by right? That's the guy, the 105 on the right in the green um, is, or sorry, no, just to the left of the green that is exerts 40% more pressure on the spine relative to standing. So based on that information alone, standing is less pressure on your low back than sitting. So there is the argument for a sit stand station, that variety of positions, having the ability to stand for a while and then sit for a little while. Um, set a timer on your, on your computer to be like, okay, I'm going to stand for two hours and then I'm going to sit for two hours. And then over lunch or after lunch, you take a break and do something different. So, um, sitting with a flexed spine. So that really hunched forward or in that slump position can add 30% more pressure to your back compared to upright sitting. So now we're super slouchy, right? So now we've gone from 140 to 185. So now we're just making that pressure worse. And again, that increased pressure can lead to herniated discs. Um, and then we're talking pressure on nerves and leg pain and talk about some serious dysfunction, um, and not being able to, to be productive because you hurt all the time. Um, and then sitting too long. I think this is, you know, we hear all the time that sitting is the new smoking. Um, and this is kind of why, right. We aren't meant to sit. Sitting can be really taxing on our body, but it also tightens up those hip flexors. So those muscles in the front of your hips, um, this is why you can't get up, right? You, you get up and you're kind of doing this like, okay, give me a second. I need to straighten up before I can need a minute before I can straighten up because those hip flexors are so tight. Those hip flexors are fascinating muscles because they live on the front of that, the, the hip, but then they dive super deep and actually insert into your lumbar spine. So they play a huge role in how your low back feels sitting too long also decreases the circulation in your, throughout your entire back, um, with all that extra pressure, you can't circulate as well and you don't get blood to your legs. So getting up, moving around, um, is going to help all of that as well. And then last, the, the last slide here is really about, um, the additional, if we can move that, thank you. Um, other side, side effects, side effects of, of bad posture, right? So we know that, Bad posture over time can create headaches, right? Hunching over creates all that strain on your upper back, which ultimately can cause headaches, um, crabbiness, bad moods, right? We get short with people. So a study found that people who sit with a slump posture have more negative attitudes, more negative um, moods, more fear, lower self-esteem, right? If you, if you do any leadership work, they talk about power poses and things like that. A power pose certainly doesn't look like this slouched over and hunched over, right? It is you generally standing up, it's shoulders back. It's, you know, one of these power poses kind of thing, um, which feels super silly to do, but it's actually really good for you. Um, and that changes your mood instantly. So fatigue. Fatigue is huge with posture because it takes a lot of energy to sit with these really collapsed body position. So poor posture makes your body work harder and it just takes more energy to be alive. So by the end of the day, you're like, man, I have done nothing all day. I have just sat at my computer and worked and I am exhausted. So, and then you add the, the stress of life on top of that. And then we've got a, a hot mess and tons of fatigue, hypertension or high blood pressure. 
slumping and slouching can raise your blood pressure. Again, that whole poor circulation um, process or thought process as well. And then sleep problems. Um, poor posture can lead to sleep. And we know that sleep, if you don't sleep, everything in your life, everything else in your life feels really crummy, right? So sleep is a foundational, um, it's a foundational function that is, if it's not happening, you're not healing, you're not feeling well, you feel exhausted. Um, and then it, that all that can lead to heart disease and obesity and a whole host of other chronic conditions. So what we've seen, um, is a huge increase in neck pain, back pain, stress, um, people are stressed out. People are feeling horrible. Um, and so they end up in their office, in our offices, because they didn't know where else to go. They didn't know what else to do. Um, but like I said before, chiropractors were positioned really well to manage some of these things and really to keep people out of the medical system, out of ERs and urgent cares. And, and so, um, so for us, the pandemic actually served, a, served a great purpose, but, but our, our whole goal was to just serve the people who needed to be served. So as we've gone you know, two years through this, I think we're getting smarter though, which is great. Um, and so in the long run, we're seeing a little bit less, um, because we're, people are kind of settling into this is my new normal, or they're going back to work or they're going into a hybrid situation. And so I think we're getting smarter. Um, we're, we're making changes. We're, we're, we're attending webinars like this to make really positive change. And I think that we're, um, we're seeking out care we're decreasing stress. Like we're, we're not as hair on fire about all of this pandemic stuff. Um, and we're, we're starting to make better decisions based on, based on what we know and what we've learned over the last two years. So I think that was the end of next slide. Maybe is questions. Do you have any questions about any of the things that I mentioned? Sorry, I didn't peek and I keep an eye on the chat, but you're okay, Dr. Sarah. Um, I do have a couple of questions. So I think what we'll do is um, if anybody attending the webinar is uh, has some questions that they wanna ask, I would encourage you to take that moment right now to put them into either the Q&A or the chat and I can read those in. Or um, I do, oh, look at that, that was fast. We got one already. <laughs> <laughs> what is selfie elbow? Oh, I love it. That's a, such a great question, right? Um, selfie elbow is this, right? that you're constantly doing one of these, these, the selfies, right? If, if you have teenagers, they're notorious for it. Um, it's basically another version of tennis elbow because then you have this heavy phone in your hand that you've got this, this grasp on. And usually it's your thumb, right? That's using the, the shutter. Um, and so we end up with essentially a version of tennis elbow, which is, is pain on the outside of the elbow out in here. Okay, well, you know what? I was going to ask you a question or two. Um, so can you talk a little bit about what um, your physical symptoms that should be triggering your head saying, you know what? I need to do something different with my setup. Like, um, you know, the, the sitting too long or all of a sudden you start to feel that in your back. And how long do you just kind of, ignore that before it's like, hmm, I should really fix this. Ooh, that's a great question. Um, I think we are creatures of habit and <laughs> particularly, um, Minnesotans, we are like, it'll get better. It'll be fine. And then pretty soon four, six, eight weeks later, we're like, okay, now I don't feel good. Now I have more things. So like, we're not, sometimes we can't always see the forest for the trees. So sometimes we don't, do a really great job of listening, um, listening to those little things that back pain that's starting to creep up. You're like, Oh, I'm sore, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. We're good. We're real good at that. Um, so in my opinion, like obviously the sooner we see something, the better. So if you start, just start paying attention is what I would ask. Like if that's, if those are things that are happening to you, or some of the things we talked about today are happening, seek out care. We've got a great network of chiropractors in this state. We are fortunate to have Dr. Chad and, and Northwestern. Um, there's a chiropractic college right in Bloomington. So there's an abundance of chiropractors who are all really well trained. Um, and, and we're fortunate to have a great network of care. So, so most likely there should be someone near you that, um, you can seek out care with. Excellent. Um, because I will tell you what, I, I mentioned this to the doctors the other day. Um, 
I had one of those hip flexor bunches up on me last year, and that is no joke. <laughs> so, um, okay, so we have a question about if hunching over is taxing on the body, why does it feel more relaxed than sitting straight up? Ooh, that's a good question. So <laughs> it, because it's, it's actually, it's collapsing your whole body, right? So that's actually not super efficient, but what happens is all of those, um, muscles on the, the backside. So we're tightening all this stuff in the front, the stuff on the backside actually lengthens and weakens. And so over time we become much, much weaker. We're just letting kind of gravity do this, like hold your body, right? Which is not great. Um, and what we're doing is actually, um, asking those post that whole posterior chain, the whole posterior muscles, the backside to actually do some work, which they're really not used to. So it does feel easier to do this easier does not mean better. So there are lots of things in the, in the world that are much easier. Um, I always tell my kids, I'm like, when you have a choice, which one's the harder choice? because the harder thing is usually the right thing. So same goes with your posture too. Excellent. Um, we got another one asking about um, someone who is working from home and whether, uh, whether you would recommend preventative chiropractic care. Uh, she has no issues now, but um, should I visit a chiropractor as a preventative measure? Ooh, also a great question. I like it. Um, of course, we would always recommend, so it seems odd to say you should go for care if you don't have any problems. Um, but from a prevention perspective, I think prevention is wonderful, right? So, so I liken prevention to changing the oil in your car rather than waiting for the car to blow up. And now I have to spend a whole lot of money to get the thing fixed. Um, I'm going to just go change the oil because that's much cheaper. It's much, e it's much easier and I don't have to do it very often. So um, preventative care, like we believe in wellness care too. I always tell patients like, I'm going to work really hard and so are you to get you better. We just want to keep you better. And so that periodic adjustment to make sure everything is good and make sure everything um, stays well aligned and before it becomes an issue, I think that is, um, it, it's, it's a wise idea. It's an investment in your health. Um, but that could be, the other question I get all the time is how, what, how often is that? Um, and I will say it depends. It depends on your lifestyle. It depends what you do as a family. It depends on your activities. Um, some of my patients I see faithfully once a month and, and they just do really well there. I have a couple other patients that can go about every two months, but generally I don't let people go farther than that because after eight weeks, two months of time, you've done a lot of things. We generally aren't very kind to our bodies physically. And so after four to eight weeks, yeah, you probably need to be checked. That doesn't mean we're going to adjust everything. I am a less is more kind of gal. I'm going to adjust what needs to be adjusted and we're going to leave the rest alone. So that's a, there's a variety of things here, but I think preventative care is, is wise. Okay. You know, and I was just thinking as you were talking that would not necessarily be exclusive to chiropractic care. I mean, if you're, mm -hmm. if you're really suffering, if you're, if you're getting headaches and you're, and you're having a hard time reading, mm -hmm. um, you would go to the eye doctor. Um, if you were just continually feeling run down, you would maybe go to your, your general doctor and, and find out is there something mental health or is there is should I be taking vitamins or something like that you know so it, it's not necessarily um exclusive too but in this context and talking about the spinal but absolutely um so we have a question here about um is it better is there a better sitting position for expecting mothers Ooh. Haha, <laughs> this is in my, this is in my lane. <laughs> Let me tell you. <laughs> um, for my pregnant mamas, I love uh, obviously getting up more frequently um, because you do those hip flexors really take a, take a, they take a beating when you're pregnant um, and you're going to externally rotate your hips because you need to accommodate this little baby belly. Um, so I really like the sit stand option for pregnant mamas because you just do need that variety and you need probably a little bit more variety. Otherwise, I really like um, the exercise ball. 
So, because it forces, you know, those big exercise, those gym balls or those, um, fitness balls, you can buy them, you can buy them anywhere. Now they're super inexpensive. Just buy one that's big enough and put enough air in it that you can sit on it, but it's, so it's cushioning, but it also forces your, your pelvis to be very supported, but also nice and open. And you, you can't, you can't slouch on one of those either. So they're a great invention, um, a great use if you can do that. So again, changing up that variety. So you might start in a chair, you might do a little bit of time on the ball, you might stand a little bit. So I think that's honestly the best option. My pregnant mamas who sit all the time, oh goodness, those poor little hips. Um, and it doesn't do you any favors to help open up your pelvis to have a baby in the end. <laughs> well, there you go. So, um, all right, so I think we'll move on here. If you've got more questions for Dr. Sarah, you can sure drop them into the um, into either the Q and A or the chat, and we'll be coming back for a little more question and answer for both doctors at the end. But I'd like us to get started with Dr. Chad. He's got a whole lot of information about um, both considerations for those of us who do have a home office or a home work site and for the employers who we work for. Thank you, Michelle. Um, yeah, so I, I, I'm looking forward to, and, and just great, great information, Dr. Sarah, uh, it, 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 it's fabulous to hear. Um, I think that one of the things that, 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 that interested me in being part of this, uh, this, this webinar uh, was kind of my journey over the last uh, couple of years as well. So uh, as, as Michelle mentioned, uh, I, I get an opportunity to lead our worksite right division here at Northwestern Health Sciences University. And our main role is to reach out to employers to try to find a way to create a uh, healthier environment for employees. And, and two years ago and one week, uh, that included uh, uh, the opportunity to to help employers within their within their workspace, and then and then COVID hit, and, and and everything changed, and it not only changed for our accounts, but it changed for me personally. So I have lived out the uh, the, the 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 COVID uh, time frame working from home too, and so I I want to be able to share with you a little bit about uh, what I think is important. We get a chance to work with employers across the country. On, on how do we help uh, how, how do we help support employees both in the workplace and outside of the workplace uh, and, and and the work from home has be, has been very challenging right there's been a, a situation in which uh, you know we, we, we took people who were consistently coming to the office and then we threw them at home as dr. Sarah said and and very unprepared both both from an individual standpoint uh, and from and, and from an employer standpoint, right? They they didn't know what to do either, right? They just they they were forced into to, to making some decisions, and and over the last two years, uh, we we've really had an opportunity for it to tell us a, a whole lot of things, um, some good and some bad. But the reality is is that there's a lot of employers, as which has been mentioned, are here already, that 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 are going to work in some sort of hybrid workforce, right? Where 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 maybe some people are coming back to the office or some people are coming back for a portion of the time, uh, but, but many people are, are going, going to continue to work from home. And, and so I think it's important to help uh, uh, understand uh, what are some, some guidelines that we should be looking for from an individual standpoint as I'm at working from home and, and, and maybe talk to, to, to the employer decision makers who, who might be on the, uh, on the webinar with us here today as to how do we create policies and, 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 and how do we support that, uh, th this kind of changeover uh, and, and whether, wh whether you're a decision maker or you take the information back to your decision makers, I think all of those things are good. And so I, I, I hope to be able to uh, address a few of those things uh, as we move uh, through uh, through the rest of the webinar here. So, Michelle, if you'll advance the slide, we can get started, right? I think that ergonomics to me is, uh, and, and, and this is coming from somebody who's done ergonomics for the last 25 years, just isn't a very exciting topic, right? It's kind of bland and boring and, you know, and, and, or at least it has been. Uh, but I want to try to change your perspective a little bit, right? Uh, for a long time, ergonomics uh, and, and the idea of a workplace setup kind of seems like, well, my desk should be the right height, my chair should be the right height, um, you know, I should only reach so far, whatever the, whatever the physical constraints are that are out there. But as I go through here, I want you to think about uh, your home work environment as a true home work environment. That certainly has to do with where you, what your desk you're working on or, 
or how far your mouse is away, as Dr. Sarah mentioned, or those types of things. But it's, it, it's about the other things too. It's about uh, the, the distractions that you have uh, in, your, in, in your work environment at home. It's about the, uh, the, the lighting and, and sound and a, a number of other things. And, and I think that from a holistic standpoint, which is where I come from in my background, is, is we wanna create an, a complete environment that makes you as productive as possible and reduces the risk of injury or, 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 or illness uh, as much as possible, right? The idea, the idea is this, is that I, I, I advocate strongly uh, for, for making sure that an employee feels as good at the end of the day as they do at the beginning of the day. And if you don't have that situation, right? If at the end of the day, you're fatigued and tired and stressed and all of those things, I think we should reflect upon what can we do through your workday uh, to, to, to see some improvements in that. And I think that ergonomics and certainly now in our new environment where we were all thrown into something where we didn't have a lot of control um, uh, is, is, is a great topic to be able to, to, to talk about this. And so I'll have you advance the slide and show. I, 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 I wanna uh, as well talk a little bit about ergonomics being a perfect science, right? We, we, we sometimes think there's a perfect desk height, as I said, there's a perfect chair, or whatever it is. And, and, and it's as simple as just going out and buying a new tool, right? Or a new piece of equipment. Uh, but I think it's more than that. And the, share, the story I'm gonna share with you next here is about the chair you see on your screen, this exact same chair. Uh, uh, I was working with a company and this was pre-pandemic and, and, and it was dealing in an office situation, but I think it translates well into the into the home work environment as well. Um, the company knew that they needed to purchase new chairs. This was a medical device manufacturing company and, and everybody was sitting at a microscope and, and, and they had these ridiculously you know, old chairs, 20, 25, 30 year old chairs that were falling apart, right? And they were, it, it just wasn't a great situation. And, and after long debate, the company decided that they were gonna purchase chairs for all 700 employees, right? All 700 production employees. And, and, and what they did is they found that this was the chair that they wanted, right? Because it had a tremendous ability to adapt to each individual person, right? You could, not only could you change the height of the chair or, 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 or the angle of the chair, right? You could move the armrests, you could do, you know, increase low, low back support. It, it just had all the bells and whistles. As a matter of fact, uh, there were over 12 adjustments uh, that, that, that could be made with this chair. And so they went ahead with it and they bought 700 chairs at $600 each. Right, so if you calculate that out, uh, they spent over four hundred thousand dollars on chairs with the hope that it would provide their employees uh, a better opportunity, uh, keep them healthier, right, more productive, less likely to be injured, and all of those things. And so they wheeled all the chairs in, and they gave them to all the employees, and all the old chairs went out to the storage area in the back. And and about two weeks later, uh, what they found is is they caught a couple of employees trying to break into the storage area out back trying to get their old chair back. And you can imagine if your company spent $400,000 on chairs, that probably was concerning to them. But the reality is, is that those employees wanted their old chair back because they had customized that old chair to meet their specific needs. Where the company failed in this account, uh, they gave them a great chair, it was a great product. But what they didn't do is they didn't teach the employees how to use those levers and those buttons and, and what was right for them individuals. So however the chair got rolled out to them at their individual workstation is how they used it. And that was the difference, right? Uh, this $600 chair was no different than a folding chair because they didn't educate the employees on how best to utilize the chair and how best to utilize it for them. And I think that that's what we're talking a little bit about here today is, is everybody that is on this webinar has a different environment at home, right? Uh, and, and, and some of us have great resources and some of us have very limited resources, but I think it's how can we create an environment with whatever resources we have uh, to best suit me as an individual. I think ergonomics isn't about getting the right desk height. I think that, that ergonomics is about getting the right desk height for you as an individual. And, uh, and if we can do that and put you in a mechanically uh, uh, good position, then that's the goal, right? Uh, so, so we're gonna go through and we're gonna talk a little bit about what that means and how, how can we take the lesson of this chair, right? Uh, and, and utilize whatever resources you have at home 
to make the most of it. Uh, and and if at the end of the if at the end of this your company wants to buy you a six hundred dollar chair, that'd be great too. But but in the meantime, let's not hold our breath and and, and find out how we can best go about uh, getting you set up from a from, from a homework uh, homework station situation. Michelle, we'll take the next slide. So this is an ideal world here, right? Maybe you've even seen something similar. Dr. Sarah had 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 an had a, had a image that was close, right? Uh, she talked about the ear being in line with the shoulder, in line with the hip, right? The hip is at a 90 degree angle so that the leg comes straight forward and then the knee bends straight down and your feet are on the floor, right? These are all the ideals, right? This is what is perfect. And, and if we could be robots, this is, this is how we would put you. Uh, your eyes are, are, are in the, you know, at, at the top of the monitor, so you don't have to have the forward flexion of the neck uh, uh, that, that so often takes place. We'd have a document holder, so you didn't have to look down at your desktop. And, and, and oh, by the way, your elbows would be resting comfortably at your side at a 90 degree angle, and your wrists would be extended straight instead of flexed or uh, extended. So this is ideal, right? And, and, and if you can do this, this would be great. The, 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 the truth is, is that it, it, I, don't, I don't know that we're always able to be able to attain the perfect situation, right? Everybody's a little bit different. I work with em, em, employees in, in, in their workstation set up and, and sometimes they're four foot 10 and sometimes they're six foot six, right? Sometimes they're 110 pounds and sometimes they're 280 pounds. And how do we accommodate for whatever it is that, that our individual characteristics uh, bring to the table? Uh, maybe it's the fact that, that I'm uh, on this webinar here looking through a pair of glasses and, and, and because of my failing or, or receding eye, uh, eyesight, um, you know, I've got, I've, I've got a different lens in the bottom of my glasses than I do in the top. And so as I look at something that is as close as my screen, right, I'm looking through the bottom of my lens. And so my monitor isn't at the top, it isn't at my eye level. My monitor is about an inch below so that when I look at my screen, I don't have to look further down, right? So it's accommodating us for each of our individual needs and, 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 and taking into consideration what's important to you. I think a great question that was earlier is, you know, what should an expected mother, how should they sit? We should, that's, an, that's an individual accommodation that we have, right? Uh, and, and hopefully that individual accommodation, uh, it, it, the accommodations we make should, should, should make it easier for, for that person in whatever time frame. And, and, and I think that's an, another important lesson is, is our bodies change over time, right? What, 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 is right for, what was right for me to sit at this computer uh, 20 years ago probably isn't the same thing, right? Because now I've got a bit of a shoulder problem. And so it's even more important that my mouse stays close to me than it is that my mouse extends from me. And so I, I just want to emphasize the idea that it, it really comes down to an individual setup and not a standard like oftentimes we see. Uh, I'll also say this is that uh, when we think about uh, having, ha having our own individual setups, uh, it isn't always about the equipment. And at the end, I, I'm, I'm going to talk about what we can do, what, what are some easy things that we can do to make sure that we're keeping ourselves healthy. Uh, and, and I think it gets a lot to what Dr. Sarah uh, pointed out in one of her graphs is, is being active. And, and, and it's so important. None of us could stay in this biomechanical position uh, for, for eight hours and still feel good. Uh, the reality is, is that our bodies are not meant to be sedentary. They're not meant to be fixed down, right? Our bodies are, are designed to be up and to be moving and to be active. And, and the really interesting thing to me is, is how I always thought when I went into my office that I was tied to my desk. And that when I went home and working from home over the last two years, I'd have this freedom to get up and move. And, and what I found was exactly the opposite, right? What I found is that I, 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 work was always there. So I was always at my, my home office desk, right? And, and, and I think I moved less because I didn't, I, I, I didn't get up and walk to the printer. My printer was just on the side of my desk and all of those things. And so we'll get into that a little bit more, but um, we'll, we'll, we'll go to the next slide if we could. Right. So this is one of the things that I want, uh, if for, for my part of the presentation here, if, if you take one concept about mechanics or ergonomics away, I, I want to take away the line of, of gravity, right? So our bodies function best when it's in balance. So 
If we take a gravity line that runs straight through our nose, down through our belly button, through the middle of our pelvis and to the floor, our feet are equally distant apart from that. That's an ideal bi biomechanical position, right? When we're looking at you from the side and you're standing, uh, again, we've talked about it. The ear is in line with the shoulder, is in line with the hip, which is in line with the, the, the little bone that sticks out of the side of your ankle, right? That would be ideal. And when we're sitting, we just mentioned it before, but the ear is in line with the shoulder, in line with the hip. We have a 90 degree flexion uh, uh, at the leg and then, and then another 90 degree at the knee down to the floor. The, this is where our body functions the best. The closer we can get to this, the better we're going to be able to, 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 to get through our day without the fatigue or the headaches or all of those things that, that, that Dr. Sarah has, has already talked about. Our bodies are no different than a lot of mechanical things, right? If the front end alignment in my car is out of alignment, my tires are going to wear faster, right? We all know that. And so the, if the body is out of alignment, the body is going to break down faster. So anything that we can do to get closer to, to, to what you see on the screen in front of you, right? The closer we can get to being in the optimum mechanical position, the better we're going to be. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is that we can't stay in this position all the time, right? It, our work requires us to, to, to not do it. Uh, and so in that situation, I want you to keep in mind that if we can't hold this ideal position uh, for, for, for lengths of time, then we need to have activity. We need to be up and we need to be moving because that promotes circulation and mu mu muscle activity and all of the other good things that, that, that follow with that. And so the idea of, uh, of, of making sure that your printer isn't sitting right next to you, maybe your printer's in the living room uh, when you're working from your home office or that second bedroom or whatever the case might be. So, so any activity that you can get, I know that for myself, like I said, I've worked from home for the, for, for the last two years. I have to consciously put on my calendar a five minute time frame to get up, to stretch, to move, because I just don't do it otherwise, right? I sit down at my computer and, you know, and, and in my world, what happens is that I, I, I get out of bed, I shower, I get ready for the day. Uh, I walk to the kitchen, I get a bite to eat. I go sit down at my desk and, and all of a sudden it's three o'clock in the afternoon if, if, if I don't have that. And so, so truly scheduling activity into your day will enhance the productivity uh, uh, of each and every one of your days. And, and it doesn't need to be much, right? Maybe, maybe what you're doing is, is you're simply just going outside and, and, and our weather is turning and uh, we're, we're in the 40s, hope to be 50s or better soon. Uh, and, and just going outside for, for, for a two minute break is part of improving your ergonomic and your ergonomic environment uh, uh, with, it, with, your home, with your homework situation. Michelle, we'll take the next slide. As I said, I think ergonomics is more than just the physical setup. We understand that, that, that we should be at the right height and, 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 and our, uh, our monitor should be good. Uh, all of those things are, are very, very important to us. But I want you to think about ergonomics and, and the setup of your home office in, in a much bigger way, right? Mental, and physic, uh, me mental fatigue and stress are, are, are we, it, that's not even, you know, just with homework, right? That's just life these days, right? You, if, you, if you turn on the news, uh, that, that'll increase it there. So maybe we need to turn off the news, right? Uh, but we'll get into that, uh, I, I think, a little bit at the end here, too. I want you to think about lighting in, 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 in your environment, right? If we're, if we're working from an illuminated screen, we need less light so that we have less eye strain. So it's, your room should be a little bit darker if you're working from a computer monitor or a screen view, right? If you're looking at a document and your screen, you need more light because the, 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 the hard copy document uh, doesn't illuminate, right? So, so we don't want that eye strain because the lighting isn't good enough. Uh, I think the biggest problem that I see uh, with, with either home office or at work offices uh, is, the, is the light that comes through the window uh, and the glare that it creates on the screens that we have. Uh, if you have direct light hitting your screen, right, it's going to require more eye strain to be able to, to, to work through that. And so eliminating direct outside lighting hitting your screen, meaning have the window on the other side of your screen if that's at all possible, right, or making sure the shade is pulled so that we don't have that direct sunlight creating the glare and all of those things. Temperature is oftentimes a big thing as well. Um, make sure you're comfortable, right? We should be working in an environment uh, that isn't too cold, 
and it isn't too warm, and this is a very individual situation. The great thing about working from home is that you are the individual. If you're in an office setting and you're trying to create the right temperature, well, the temperature that's ideal for you might not be for everybody else, but the reality is, is at home we can create that. Uh, the, the other thing that's uh, the fourth thing that's on the list here for us is background noise, right? And, and when we started uh, the whole pandemic move to home aspect, uh, it was chaotic, right? Or at least it was chaotic for me. I've got six kids and, and, and a handful of them were home, uh, uh, you know, trying to go through their, their, their educational process. And, and so there's all this chaos happening around me. And, and how can I get anything done? It's a little better now. But the reality is, is, is that you know, make sure you're, you're, you're aware of the background noise that you, that, that's created. Some people enjoy some, some, some music or, or something in the background, uh, but, but make sure that it's not overwhelming uh, and, and make sure that, that it, it, it doesn't uh, distract you from the focus of the work that you're trying to do. Uh, so that could be an open window on garbage day when the garbage trucks are driving by or whatever the case might be, right? Just be cognizant of the fact that even that background noise creates and changes the work environment. And oftentimes we don't notice it right away, but it's that mental fatigue, it's that stress that takes place when we're talking about the, the, these sort of issues. We'll take the next slide. I'm gonna spend just a little bit uh, of time uh, talking about uh, kind of the basics uh, of, of setting up a workstation and what I think are, are the most important things. And maybe most importantly, what I, where I see people falling short uh, or companies falling short as they, uh, as they are setting it up. We've talked a lot about neutral body posture, right? And making sure that my body is in a good mechanical position. I think most of us have seen those, you know, that diagram and, and, and those things before, and we know what that is. Uh, but evaluate yourself. I always uh, recommend that you get set up at your workstation and you have somebody else. Maybe it's one of your kids, maybe it's a spouse or a partner or whoever it is, take a look at you, right? Because sometimes I don't know if my ear is in line with my shoulder because I've been doing it so far that it just feels like it is, even though it isn't. And so have somebody else give you some feedback and say, hey, is my ear in line with my shoulder, in line with my hip, or, right? And, and if it isn't, how are we gonna change it? And I loved the question earlier, uh, you know, why, 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 why does slouching feel so good, right? If, I'm, if it's not good. And it's because in, in, in my assessment, uh, one of the factors is, is it's because you've conditioned yourself for that over time, right? We, we, we've conditioned ourselves, we've conditioned ourselves, we've conditioned ourselves. And then all of a sudden to sit up straight feels awkward. And as Dr. Sarah mentioned, sometimes you got to do the hard thing to do the right thing. And so you've got to get back to that mechanical position so you don't see further deterioration of that because it can feel good to slouch and let those muscles stretch a little bit. But the reality is, is that you're creating problems bigger down the road for sure. So neutral body posture is really important, uh, whatever that is for you, right? As I said, you're an individual and, and, and making sure that you have that opportunity to, to, to be in neutral body posture. One of the things that I'll say about that is that Again, another big mistake that I see that's being that, that that's made is, is is for shorter people whose desks are the same height as the rest of us. They've got to elevate their chair a little bit, and they they're dangling their feet. Right. This is this creates a, a number of different issues, but most importantly, it creates some circulation issues in the lower legs. Um, and, and 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 that get a footstool. It's really easy. Sit, place your feet on something firm will go a long way to taking away some circulation issues, take away some low back issues. It provides some stability to your pelvis and your lumbar spine. That's certainly one of the things that I see, uh, uh, especially shorter individuals uh, running into. Taller individuals, it's exactly the opposite, right? Now, all of a sudden, oftentimes what they're dealing with is they're dealing with a cramped space for, for, for their legs, right? And so what happens is, is that they push away from their desk further and further. And now they've got to reach out to their, to their keyboard or laptop. Uh, and so, so be, be, be aware of that, right? And, and maybe what needs to happen if you're a really tall individual and, and, and you need a little bit more desk height, uh, they have desk risers for, for, for a few bucks, you can raise your desk an inch or two, which is usually all, all that needs to happen. Another basic that, that, that I wanna hit on here for us 
is the idea of activity or movement. As, as both uh, Dr. Sarah and, and I have mentioned, our bodies are meant to be active uh, and, and we function better, not just physically, mentally, emotionally, all of those things, we, we, we function better. Um, our joints are meant to move. And when we lock, when, when we're locked in a position, what happens is, it, is that creates stress. And oftentimes it does a, a couple things. It shortens one group of muscles, right? So if I constantly have my, 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 my arm in this position, my bicep tends to shorten, my tricep tends to extend. And when we do that with the low back, and you, you, hear every, you hear a lot of healthcare people say, well, you got to strengthen your core, right? Well, I think uh, what, what's really important is we got to balance our core, right? Uh, you know, are our, 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 our the uh, abdominal muscles and, and, and the front pelvic muscles, are they stretching? Uh, are, are, they, are, are they strong enough to be able to support what's happening with the lumbar muscles uh, on the backside? Uh, and so being active and being movement will help all of those things keep in balance over time. And like I said, whether it's scheduling time or whether you have the opportunity to have a sit-stand desk, that's an, an ideal situation in my mind. I'm constantly telling employers and their employees that if you can create a workstation where you can change your position every 15 to 20 minutes, that's gonna go a long way, not just to keep myself physically healthy, but I'm gonna be more productive at two, three, four, 4, 30, 5 o'clock in the afternoon, because that's mentally a healthy thing to do as well, right? Creating that activity, that blood flow. I would say that in an ideal situation, I get asked, I, I should say, I get asked often, is it better to sit or is it better to stand, right? Because I have, you know, and, and the reality is, is, is that I think that if I had to choose, um, I, 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 I would probably say stand, but I can't do that, right? Because I know that that's not even right. I would say you need to do both, right? You need to be sitting and standing and back and forth and, and making sure that, that, that you're active. Uh, and most of all, that you're listening to your body. Uh, we have this incredible innate ability for our body to give us warning signs. And I think for most of us, we have done a great job of being able to turn off those warning signs because we don't want to listen to them, right? If, if it's tough to sit if it's tough to go from a sit to a sand, like Dr. Sarah mentioned, right, where it, ah, it's really tough, you've been sitting too long, right? So you got to move more. Uh, listen to our bodies. Uh, if, if, if we're having some shoulder pain, some upper back pain, if we're having that neck tension take place in, in the mid-afternoon every, every day, then we need to address it. Maybe we need to do it with more activity. Maybe we need to do it by going in and, and having some, and, and being, uh, uh, seeking some, some, some care. And, and being proactive in our own in our own health health uh, needs, but certainly listening to your body because there will be there there will be things that your body tells you. Don't put them off. Uh, again, I, I think that early intervention is the best way to save money uh, on, on health care. If we can if, if we can initiate some sort of care or activity or, or whatever it is early on, most things can be taken care of. You've heard me say that another basic is customizing your workstation to meet you. Now, whether you take a, a more in-depth class on that or you take these basics that we've looked at and you make improvements, any improvement is, it is good, uh, but customizing this, the, your workstation uh, to, to you as an individual uh, is, is very, very important for us. Michelle, I'll take the next slide. Speaking to the employers or speaking to you as employees to speak to your employers, I, I, I wanted to put this slide in here because I think it's so important. Uh, so many companies right now are in this uh, space of, okay, we, we, we have workers that are working from home. Uh, we've got to create some policy around it. And, and most of the time that policy uh, falls in line with, okay, who can work from home and who can't? How much can they work from home? How are, we gonna, how are they going to be accountable? And, and, and ergonomics oftentimes is left out of that uh, conversation. I'm here to say, if you're a decision maker at, at your employer, or if you're an influencer, which I think everybody's an influencer, uh, I think that there needs to be some guidelines for companies who have a significant part of their workforce working from home. And I think it needs to be making sure that your employees have a good sound education on what a good workstation setup is, right? Like, like it's been discussed, we've thrown people back in their home and said, go. And they sat at their coffee table and their kitchen table and their kitchen counter and maybe laying even down in bed answering emails, right? All of these things. And, and, and we thought it was for a short period of time, but it's not for, for many people. It's not for me, right? 
as I said, I've gone home and, and, and I'm transitioning to coming into the office one day a week coming up this spring, but I'm going to be at home and I need to make sure that I have the, the, the right setup at home. And the only way you can do that is if, if, if there's some education for you or the employees at the company that you're working for. Uh, another big issue is how do we budget for this, right? Well, you know what? Uh, in, in most companies, they create an office space for employees, right? Well, they should create a home office space for, space for employees and there should be some budgeting dollars to consider. Every company is gonna be different on this on what they have for resources or whatever the case might be, but that needs to be part of a company policy. Uh, and, and, and how does a company make sure that they individualize the setup for each, uh, for each of their employees because it might be significantly different, right? Some employees might have a, a fabulous den that they can sit down in and, and work and close the doors and seal it all off. And other employees are, are, you know, don't have that opportunity. And so they're gonna be in a more common space of the house. And how can the company provide some support and all of those things? And then most importantly, in any company policy about working from home, I think there needs to be a, a strong opportunity for the employees to provide the feedback so that they can continue to guide the policy moving forward and what's important to them. I can guarantee you that all companies right now want to keep and attract their best employees. Uh, and, and this is going to be a part of it. Uh, I know that there's a lot more there. And if for anybody who, who's interested, uh, I, I certainly can um, uh, provide some additional information outside of this, uh, this webinar on, on, on good current, good policy and, 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 and how to go about setting that up uh, or help with that process. Michelle, we'll take the next slide. And, and, and this is this is kind of where I'm wrapping up just a bit here uh, before we get to more questions. But the idea is this, is that uh, it's never perfection, right? It's progress. What, whatever your situation is today, I hope that the last uh, you know, hour, hour and a half uh, it, it is gonna help you go back and take a look and make some improvements. And if we can make some improvements, then we're getting to better health. It's about making progress, not perfection. Certainly so important for us. Michelle, I'm ready to, I, th I think, are we, are we going to questions or are we going to, we're going to questions. It we're like. going to go into some questions real quick here. Um, if anyone has some questions for Dr. Chad, go ahead and enter them into the Q&A box or into our chat. Um, we did have a couple that came up early. Um, the first one was, um, I'm guessing you will cover this, but I'm curious about what some of the most common mistakes people make in their home office are. Yeah, I think the biggest mistake that people make uh, in, in their home office is that they don't have a dedicated space, right? They kind of bounce around uh, and, and, and they, don't create, they don't create that work environment. The other thing that, that, that I think that uh, too many people make in working from home necessarily isn't even to do with the ergonomics, it's to do with their routine, right? And, and, and I fell into this trap early too, right? I could just crawl out of bed and get a little breakfast and, and stay in my sweats and t-shirt and, and, and start my work day. Uh, I, I think we need, uh, we need to create a better routine to get us into that situation so that, uh, that, that, that we're more prepared, right? So creating a routine is really important. Creating the space is really important for us. And, and, and the other thing that I would say some of the some of there's some obvious things, right? I mean, you know, if you're answering your emails in bed, uh, that's probably not a, a good mechanical position for us, right? So, so making sure that we have a true situation where we're set up, and, and we're utilizing it. If I if I take a look at one individual thing, I would say that uh, that people don't have enough lumbar support, right? Support in the lower of their back when they're sitting. They're either sitting on the edge of a chair, or or the chair isn't right for them. And so sometimes it just requires grabbing a pillow from the couch and putting that, you should feel the majority of the support from the back of your chair, just above your pelvis and below your upper back, right? So if we can create some support in that lumbar spine, that low back, that's the biggest mistake people make because that leads to fatigues in the shoulder, up and through the neck and all of those things. So that's my one thing after a long-winded answer. Excellent. Um, and I do have one of those little back there braces on my chair and I actually love it. Um, I've got a question. Hello, this is, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the question is, um, what are your feelings on balance boards for standing desks? Yeah, I, 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 I like the idea of balance boards in general. 
right? So, so, so the idea that, that, you know, that we're creating this proprioceptive improvement process, and I think that they're super good. I think that they can get away, they, they can get away in way of the focus on your work sometimes. Um, so, so, so I'm not sure that it's the ideal to, to be on a balance board for an extended period of time while you're trying to work or type. Um, but the reality is, is that don't throw the balance board out, just, you know, find, find, find a different time to be able to utilize it. Um, but, but yeah, the balance boards are great. They increase our proprioception and, and, and it creates that activity or that movement and, and all of those things that are necessary, but used in short, used in short time frames. And we've got a comment saying, I've been using a treadmill desk for eight years and love it. I've never heard of such a thing, but she's wondering if you've got any thoughts about that. I do. If it's been great for, for eight years, you should continue to do it, right? This is an individualized thing again, right? Some people aren't able to focus while they're walking along, even at a slow pace. But if you're able to, perfect. We're talking about being active and being movement and, and having movement. Linda, utilize, don't, don't, don't go away from it. If it's working, right? If it improves your health, that if it improves your focus, if it, if it does all of those things, Linda, then, then, then man, for sure, go continue to keep using it. And somebody might want to try it, right? You know, maybe, maybe you, you know, that, that you have that opportunity uh, to, to have that. Um, I would say that uh, it, it's not for everybody, but, but if it works, it works. Okay, we got one more here. It says, thank you for the great content and taking the time to present. Dr. Sarah and Dr. Chad, please provide your insight on walking stations, bike chairs, and other products such as knee chairs or fitness ball used in offices as secondary sit or stand options. Yeah, I think that this follows up the last question we talked sure. about, right? Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think that these are all good things. It's individualized a little bit, whether it's a walking station or whether you're on a bike and, 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 and working, the activity is good, right? But it's not for everybody. Um, you know, you, you still have to be able to focus. I I I struggle to sit on a bike and type, right? Uh, or or walk and type. So it's great to use a walking uh, desk. And 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 sometimes this happens in, in in more corporate settings. But but I can be on a conference call and I can be walking, right? If if, if I've got to be filling out a report, I'm probably not going to be on, on on a walking treadmill. As 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 for the other things that she talks about. I think that uh, the, the knee chairs, and again, I'll give you my opinion on this, Dr. Sarah might differ, but, but they're great for short durations. Um, I, I think that it also creates some, some stress on the knees and hips. Uh, and as, a, as an employer, uh, as an employee that, that's aging, that might not be where you want your stress, right? So, so, so I think that that's the case. Uh, Dr. Sarah has talked about the value, uh, especially in expected mothers regarding the fitness ball. And I agree with that as well. Um, but somebody who has a pre-existing low back condition might need more support on the lumbar spine and a fitness ball might not be great for them. Again, my, my situation is if this is a specific situation, specific concern of yours, you know, talk to, talk, talk to an individual healthcare provider, whether it be Dr. Sarah or, or whoever your, 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 your healthcare providers are, uh, it, it's good to have that conversation because they're all good options for some people. Dr. Sarah, did you want to chime in on this? I would just chime in with the same um, kind of feedback. It's it's a very, I think there's there's they're good choices. Um, none of them should be used as the only choice. Um, I think they're great for a variety, but also kind of back to what Chad said earlier, like it definitely needs to be ergonomics are so individual. Um, I you know, I often say like the world isn't made for really short people or really tall people. So you have to kind of take your personal, the way you're built and, and find a thing or a couple of things that works best for you. So I think they're all great things, um, short durations, um, and, and in a rotation with other things, just like Chad said, I think is, is exactly what I would say about that. Yeah. And, and to follow up on Sarah's comment, you know, when we take a look at ergonomic guidelines, we can all go, we can all go Google them, right. And they'll give us a range of what it should be. Right? And, and, and there's very standardized procedures, or, um, uh, protocols out there as to, as to what the ranges should be. But all of these ranges, right? All of, you know, the desk I'm sitting at, the chair that you're sitting at, the folding chair that you sit at, wherever you are, whatever, all of, the, all of that has been designed off of, uh, off of studies done in the 1950s uh, with the US military trying to find out who the average person was, right? And, and so get this concept, right? They, they took a look at, 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 at 
hundreds of thousands of, of, of people in the military and they tried to find their average height, their average weight and their average reach. Well, the trouble with that is that it was 1950, first of all, a few years ago. Second of all, uh, the study included no female participation, right? So, so, so we didn't look at what they're, what, how, how that might factor in. And what they found is that the average individual is five foot eight and 135 pounds. Now, I'm not sure who's all joining us here today, but I'm gonna guess that there's not anybody that's that, right? Uh, so, so we can kind of throw it out and we just have to look at what it is from an individual need, what we need, what, what it is that we need. Okay, um, now we're gonna break a little bit here. Um, we are down to about 10 minutes left and we have actually have a little bit more of another section that we wanted to talk about uh, real quickly. Uh, Dr. Chad and Dr. Sarah will be able to stick around past 1230 so we can complete the, the education part of this webinar. Now, everyone who's here with us, we certainly hope that you're able to stick it out with us, but we understand if you need to get back to work or get back to lunch or whatever. So um, good thing is we are recording this. And as we mentioned earlier, we're going to be sending out the link to the video in about, you know, within the next week. So if you aren't able to stick it out through the end with us this afternoon, um, you know, you'll be able to go back and take a look at that later on. So with that in mind, um, we do have one more question here that was for Dr. Chad, and then we'll move into this next, this next section. And the question is, if someone is looking to be assessed as far as their environment, what resources do you recommend reaching out to make that happen? Uh, I, well, I, I mean, obviously there's, there's lots of vendors that are out there. Um, I, 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 it, it seems a bit of a setup. I don't wanna to be too self-serving, but Worksite Right uh, does, does that as well. Uh, but there are a lot of resources, right? I mean, you can, uh, I'm, your, your employer might, 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 have, might have some, some vendors that they use as well, uh, but certainly feel free to be in touch with me. Uh, directly, we'd, we'd love to be able to help you there or provide the right resources. The Minnesota Safety Council, uh, the Society of Human Resource uh, Association does this type of thing. There are a lot of organizations that, that provide this. Actually, a lot of, uh, there, there's, there's actually a, a lot of the time uh, a employer's uh, worker compensation insurance companies are even starting to provide this even in the home setting. Uh, so there's a lot of different opportunities, maybe more on a one-to-one -one conversation. We could find what's best. Great. All right. Um, I think we can move on to this next section here. Uh, we're just real, we wanted to kind of wrap it up a little bit with um, the our two guests talking about things that you can do to stay healthy at home and to manage some of the extra stress. And um, then after that, We'll quick um, go into some of the uh, resources that are available for everyone through Twin Cities Teleworks. So with that, take it away, Dr. Sarah. All right, so this kind of was, um, my thought here was just like, what else can we do, right? So we've got a great setup or maybe we're working on our setup at work, but what else can we do to stay healthy um, and to really help ourselves right at home? So these are, are just really super general um, recommendations we recommend for all of our patients. And um, I mean, our, and just the way you're, it's just how to be a better steward of your own body. Like I said before, we're not very kind often to our physical bodies and we can't get a new one. So how can we treat this as good as we possibly can? So, um, and, and maybe in your life, you've maybe made some decisions that maybe you haven't treated it very nicely. And that's led to you feeling the way you do now. So what can we do? Um, and number one thing is move your body, get some daily exercise. I don't care what that looks like. That does not mean you have to run a marathon. That does not mean you have to get on, you know, do a triathlon. It does not mean that at all. And it doesn't have to be difficult. It does not have to be expensive. It doesn't even need, mean you need to go to the gym. That means I want you to get a good pair of tennis shoes. That means I want you to get out of your office. Maybe that means go for a walk. Um, over lunch. Maybe that means you're going to go hit some golf balls in your backyard over lunch, or you're going to go play with your kids um, on a break. Um, getting up 
off of your, away from your desk. Ideally, if you can get up 10 minutes out of every hour is great. I also realize that's not always super realistic, especially if you're into a project and you're busy. Setting those timers, like Dr. Chad said, is huge. Um, you can use sticky notes and those kinds of things on your desk, but we stop seeing those sticky notes after a, a period of time. So setting those reminders, those pop-ups that come up on your desk, super awesome for like, oh shoot, I got to get up and go move. Um, and that doesn't mean go move yourself to the kitchen to go get a snack and come back and sit down again. Like I actually want you to go move your body. The key with daily exercise is doing something to get your heart rate elevated um, more than it is now. So again, it doesn't have to be difficult. 20 minutes, 20 to 30 minutes every day would be, is really ideal. So some people, uh, um, I recommend sometimes like pencil it in on your, on your calendar as a non-negotiable, just like every other meeting you might have, um, some people and find the time that works best for you. There isn't an ideal time to get exercise. The ideal time is the time that you will do it. So if that means you get up 30 minutes earlier, if that means that's not for you and you want to stay up a little later, if that means you're going to sneak it in in your lunch hour, whatever, where, whatever that means for you is really what you should, is what you should do. Ideally we I'd like a mix of, of <clears throat> cardiovascular exercise where your heart rate gets up. It's a little bit of strength training. We know as we get older, we lose muscle mass. So strength training is important, but again, does not need to be difficult. That can be some hand weights at home. Um, there's because everyone's at home, there's so much available to us on YouTube. And I mean, there are fitness, um, apps through your TVs now and things like that. So there are, there are, there are an abundance of things to, to do. Some people say that doing it at home isn't, doesn't work for them and they need to go somewhere. better than a nap. So there's always that. Um, and daily stretching kind of hand in hand with exercise. Um, we sit so much that we shorten your muscles become short and tight or short and weak. And so, um, just stretching a little bit of stretching every day, um, can make a huge difference. Stretching is one of those things that a lot of folks don't feel like they're actually doing any sort of workout when they're stretching, but it is really important, um, to keep your muscles limber, to keep your, your body moving that way. So lengthening those, those, um, those muscles is huge. There's tons and tons and tons of, um, stretches to, for sitting at your, at your desk or, you know, just to even do five minutes of stretching before you sit down or, or at lunch, or even at the end of the day, again, the best exercise is the exercise that you will do. So, um, and I just linked a website to some stretches for back pain at your desk, but really the main thing at your desk is doing anything just to open up that whole upper back and neck. So just stretching open, sitting up straight and reaching back something super simple, um, to open up all of that, um, those anterior muscles on the front, drinking your water, 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 um, half your body weight in ounces is generally what we have people shoot for. There is a variety of uh, opinions about water and the whole eight, eight ounce glasses, there actually isn't a whole lot of scientific basis for that. So, and I might be a different size than Dr. Chad. So Dr. Chad's body might just need more water than mine. And so that's where that half your body weight in ounces, um, is a good gauge. That doesn't mean that's the, the end all be all, but, um, coffee doesn't count. Um, soda does not count. Soda will actually dehydrate you. So, um, if you can swap out soda for even one soda for a water instead, or if you're, or alternate, that's a good option too. And what the water does is, I mean, your body is mostly made of water, right? We know that hydration is good. There was actually a study that was done on chronic pain patients. And all they did was have them drink more water and those chronic pain folks felt better just from drinking more water. So water can be super powerful. It's free. It's cheap and easy, right? Or nearly free. Um, so that is huge. And I, I liken it to your muscles feeling like beef jerky or steak. And we really want those muscles to be nice and hydrated, like a big juicy steak. So that is, is going to make you feel better. If your muscles feel like beef jerky, yeah, you're not going to feel really great. Um, diet, feeding your body well. Um, I know it's easy to, when we're stressed out to make unwise decisions and choices and, and, and 
choose the fast things and make the easy things. Um, food prepping, deciding, you know, menu planning, that sort of thing, all super important to making sure you're getting fruits and vegetables every single day. You will feel better if you just feed your body well. It's putting good fuel in to get good out. So if you put crummy in, you're going to get crummy out. Um, and then the last thing I put on here was sleep. We talked about sleep a little bit before it's foundational. So if you're not sleeping well, you are not going to be feeling well. So we always say no screens, at least an hour before bed, don't get sucked into the trap of you finally put the kids to bed and you sit down on the couch and you start scrolling on Facebook or social media or Instagram or whatever it is. And pretty soon two hours have gone by and now it's 1130. Oh crap. I need to get to bed. And then you can't turn your brain off right? Because the, the, the blue light from the screen has stimulated your brain and now I can't sleep. So, and then the last, that's my, that's my lovely dog. She wants to join the party. Um, the last thing is just that consistent sleep and wake time as well. So, um, making sure you're going to bed at the same time of day and waking up at the same time every day, that will also make a large difference in the quality of your sleep too. So Dr. Chad, I didn't know if you had any other things to add, but, um, I'll just hand it off to you. Dr. Chad, I think you're still muted. <laughs> I sound, maybe I sound better when I'm muted, I'm not sure. But the reality is that, that it, we, we've talked a lot in the last 90 minutes about movement and changing positions, right? And, and how are we going to do this? This stretching is not me, by the way, this is a picture of somebody else, right? But, uh, but the, I think that stretching is not only important at the beginning of, and, and at the end of our day or activity, but taking micro stretches throughout your day uh, goes a long way to be able to help. Uh, I talked to you about how I plan my day and making sure I have movement, having that stretch. I think that having some mindfulness activities is super important. What are we doing to slow our brain down? We live in a world of stimulation, right? Everything is meant to grab our eye and attention and whatever it is. And, and what are we doing to calm ourselves down? I think that mental health and it is, is a vital topic in our society, whether we're talking about it as it relates to the, our home offices or, or life in general, anything that we can reduce, that can be reducing, uh, that, that can reduce our mental stress is gonna produce a better physical me. And so be thoughtful of these types of things, right? All of this happens for us. And when we're talking about physical, reducing physical stress, it's a lot of the same things, right? It, it, it's about movement and, and making sure that that, that we're doing things that are mechanically correct for us, giving our body the rest, like Dr. Sarah mentions. It, 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 you know, sometimes what happens, as I think I mentioned earlier in, in, in the webinar, I have six kids, a really busy job, and a lot of other things that I like to do, right? That, but if I don't find the time to decompress and slow down, right? I don't, I'm not the best dad, right? And, and, and I'm not the best worker, and I'm not the best whatever. Right, And so if I wanna be the best, if I wanna feel as good at the end of my day as I do at the beginning of my day, I have to put some of these things in my life, right? And, and I would hope that you see the value uh, in, in that as well. There is much more information out there that, that we can take a look at and, and that you should learn about. I think that this has been a fabulous opportunity and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to be able to speak with each of you here today. Uh, because I think that this opens a window for us, you know, wanting to know more, or at least I hope that that's the case, right? How, how, how can we make some improvements? And, and again, I'll get on, on, on this topic. It's great if I can make the improvements for myself and I can create a home office that, 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 that's a little bit healthier. If I can create an environment that's a little bit healthier, for me, that's a fabulous thing. And so the last two years have been a great exercise in that. But you want to know what else it's done? Is it's made an opportunity for me to be an example to my kids and the next generation of, of taking care of ourselves, right? And, and how, how can we each and every day try to, to do the most to maximize our health? And then how can we teach the next generation or in my situation, my kids in particular, right? To, to value that same thing. Uh, and, and I think that that's an important aspect of health, right? Uh, we shouldn't wait for our health to get so bad that we have to have some sort of emergency type care, right? That's expensive. There's a lot of suffering involved. And so anything that we can do to, 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 to create a better environment, work or home, that, that enhances our health and, and is, is gonna go a long way, not to pay it off by today or tomorrow, 
Um, but you know, there's a there's going to be a day that comes where where I want to you know maybe hang up my job and 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 go golf all the time, right? I, I want to be healthy enough to go do that. Uh, and so I, I would encourage you, whatever your passions are, keep yourself healthy enough during your workday so that you can enjoy those passions outside of work. That's what I got. <laughs> Oh, okay. Um, then I am now going to turn this over to Kate Meredith. She is our vice president with Twin Cities Telework, and she's going to tell us a little bit about our program. Thank you so much, Michelle. And I want to say a big thank you to Dr. Sarah and Dr. Chad. This has been such a great session, lots of valuable information and lots to think about. And we're very thankful for your time and your expertise. Um, I want to talk briefly about Twin Cities Telework, but first a quick reminder that we are recording today's webinar and we will send a link to the recording as well as the full slide deck to all registrants within a week um, so you can share it with others or watch on demand. So the webinar today has been brought to you by Twin Cities Telework by Commuter Services. Um, our website is tcttelework.com and we have several free resources for employers, managers, teleworkers um, that you can access right there on the website. We also encourage you to utilize the Ask an Expert feature. Uh, our staff has many years of research and, um, and knowledge about telework and hybrid work, and we can answer questions. And we also have experts standing by if there are questions that we can't answer. So please, any kind of question, please use that feature. We would love to, to see your questions come in. Um, you will also find the latest um, telework trends, articles, and updates. Um, and you can sign up to receive the Twin Cities Telework newsletter. And we have this, the webinar series um, that you can watch on demand. We have a webinar page on our website as well. So if you've missed some previous webinars, you can check those out there. And then um, with this one, I can advance the slide, but so you will find just a little bit more detail about what you'll find on the website. Uh, we have sample telework policies and agreements. We talked about mental health today and the importance of that. We've developed um, some mental health recommendations for teleworkers, as well as a colorful infographic that you can share and print um, about mental health quick tips. Um, we have developed tips for managers and teleworkers about how to you know, be successful in a telework or hybrid work environment. Um, we have an employer guide for setting up telework and hybrid work. Um, and we develop new resources often. And again, they can be printed and shared um, with employees, with yourself or coworkers. So um, check back often and use our, our website as a resource. Thank you so much. So Michelle, I'll hand it back to you. Great. All right. Thank you to everyone who is sticking it out with us this far. Um, we are just about finished here. I just wanted to toss it out there and see if anyone had any more questions that you'd like to share with Dr. Chad or Dr. Sarah. Um, if you would like to, you can still submit them to us. Or as you may have noticed, as we were going through the slide deck, uh, we've included links to their websites and email information. So you can certainly reach out to them directly. Um, also our Ask the Export tool on Twin Cities Telework, that's, a, that's another great resource. So um, it, are there any more questions for our panelists today? I am not seeing a one. All right, so with that, I'd like you, I'd like to say thank you to join it for you all who have joined us today. And um, if you need more information, you can certainly reach out to myself or Kate Meredith and also check out our Twin Cities Telework website. And just a quick reminder that you will be getting that quick little survey not long after we hang up here. So um, if you have a moment to give us a, uh, your opinion about today's content, we'd sure appreciate it. Dr. Sarah, Dr. Chad, um, thank you so much. And I really appreciate all of the information that you've shared with us. Um, 
I think that there is going to be some opportunity for more information in the future. And this is just great. Thank you. Thanks for having Thanks, me. Thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you as well.